Welcome to the Early Learning Center's virtual town hall number two and open house. We are so glad you had the opportunity to join us today. Um, and we invite you to remain on after the town hall and switch over to our Zoom invitation for our individual program wide open house. Hold on. Welcome to the Office of Early Learning Virtual Hall, Town Hall number two. We are so glad you had the time to join us today. Um, and hopefully we will be able to answer the questions um, that are burning. If not, we invite you to join us with, for our virtual open houses um, via the Zoom link at the end of this recording. Um, and then if you continue to have additional questions, please do join us um, for any one of our director drop-ins. Welcome, glad you're here. And we'd like you to meet our leadership team. I am Karen Higginbotham, Director of the Office of Early Learning. And I am Gregory Hall, the Clark County School District Pre-K Coordinator as well as one of the administrators at the Early Learning Center. Hello, I'm Katie Salter. I'm the Preschool Special Education Team Lead. Hi, my name is Angie Moon de Avila, and I'm the coordinator for the Early Head Start and Head Start program. Welcome. Hello, my name is Vinette Fabregas, and I'm the Early Head Start and Head Start Assistant Coordinator. Glad you could be here. We'd like to also introduce you to our teacher team leaders. Um, they will meet you during your program's open house. This is Ms. Kima Johnson is our early Head Start team lead. Ms. Teffy Brookins is our Head Start team lead. Ms. Jamette Perry is our early Head Start home base team lead. Ms. Cynthia Stevens serves as our preschool special education team lead. And Ms. Vanessa Pruitt is our pre-K team lead. They are looking forward to speaking with you by program after this event. I want to say welcome. Um, so glad you're here. Um, one thing that's going to be critically important, whether your child remains virtual or is coming face to face, is that we have the most current, the teachers have your most current email and phone number contact for you and the family um, and for alternate contacts. As a reminder, immediately following this town hall, we will have an open house. You'll follow the Zoom link. Um, remembering that our virtual learners will continue on their current learning schedule. Face-to-face -face learners who return to school on Monday, November 9th, will follow our traditional schedule. Um, virtual learners need to continue to log in on the daily schedule times. Our face-to-face -face learners should arrive and depart on time daily. It's gonna be critically important, particularly with the current um, health crisis that we are in. Car riders, the door will open at 720, so you can pull up and begin loading at 720. Early Head Start and preschool special education children begin class at 730. So we'd like for them all to be on site and present ready to learn by 730. Our Head Start and pre-K classes begin at 740. So they need to all be on site ready to learn by 740. Those back car rider doors will close at 750. Um, and this year, just to make sure that we're keeping our children safe and secure and that we're not having any potential for exposures. Um, late arrival or early pickup will be for doctor and dental appointments only. Um, and we ask that you make sure that those are the only um, reasons for late entry or early pickup. Our pickup will begin at 225. Classes end for our early Head Start and preschool special education. Their classes end at 2.30. Our Head Start and pre-K end at 2.35. Um, 
and our pickup is typically complete by 250, but we are going to ask for some space and grace on this for the first couple of weeks because we know that it will take a longer time the first couple of weeks for us to get the pattern down, for parents to get the pattern down, and for everyone to be able to do that efficiently. And so we want to ask your grace with us um, if, it, if that first day of car rider takes an hour, know that eventually it's going to be closer to 20 minutes, but it will take a longer time at the beginning. And we, we ask that you just have patience with us as we develop and everyone learns the process. The process um, for car riders, if you come up during extension, down Evans, up Waddell, or up Hancock, car riders all enter from the back of our district. They will come in through this back door. At that door, we will have um, staff standing ready. Um, and buses are the only ones who come in from the front. And so we wanna make sure we're being careful and cautious and that no one tries to enter from the front because it, there is a barricade across there. Um, and we want to make sure that we're going around the HT Edwards campus and entering from the back of our um, campus. In the morning, if you come bring your when you bring your child to the bus stop, um, they will have the screening screening questionnaire. They'll do a quick temperature check, and they're going to make sure that your child has a mask before they enter the bus. We ask that you provide a mask for your child and that they come to the bus stop with a mask on. If not, the buses will have some disposable masks that children can wear. Um, at our car rider drop-off, we'll have the same screening questionnaire. We'll do a temp check at the car, or if you're a walk-up, we'll do it at the table. Um, and then as students transition, they, all transitions will take place outside as we won't have external guests inside of our building at this time. Um, including parents. And so we're going to ask that you say your goodbyes and tell your, you know, share with your child that it's important that they participate in school and learn for the day and that you're going to go to work and you will come back and pick them up so that we can make sure our children understand that, you know, their ride will be back at the end of the day. But for right now, let's go forward and learn and be a part of the school day. We, you will notice that outside of our building, we will have hand washing sinks as well as hand sanitizer at each of the entries and in each of the classroom. And that is just to facilitate additional hand washing for our students. Um, during the school day, there will not be visitors allowed within the building. Um, and again, we're asking that any late entry or early pickup be only for doctors and dental appointments. And we really ask that you work with us to make sure children are up in the morning and ready for school and that they're here on time, ready to learn. We have given a little bit of space. So, you know, class starts at 7.30, but if we're running a little bit behind and it's 7.45 before you can get here, that will work after 7.50 um, or this first week, eight o'clock, um, the doors will be closed and we'll ask that you uh, make sure that the only reason at that point we would be able to accept is if we have a, a dental or a doctor's appointment that you either need to come from or go to. Um, pick up. Car rider numbers, we're gonna, you will get these from with your students. We want them to have those prominently displayed in your window. Um, you will also need to make sure that you have your photo ID with you. Um, all adults who come to do car rider pickup, whether you have the car rider number should have their ID and they must be on the pickup list for the child. Um, at the bus stop, again, you must be meet the bus for pickup with your ID in hand and they must be listed on the pickup list. Um, that is for the safety of your child. Um, and in this case, an adult is anyone 18 years or older. Mr. Hull is gonna share with us a sample of the pre-K schedule. Hello to everyone. Hello to our ELC Lions. We are excited about having you come to school in person on Monday, November 9th. Um, just a little bit about the pre-K schedule so that you will know, parents, you will know what to expect and what the children will be doing um, while they're in school here at the Early Learning Center. 
As uh, Ms. Higginbotham said, the doors open at 720. Um, children will be allowed to go into classrooms beginning at 720. And on our schedule, we have arrival activities set for For, for those children to do and engage in, um, but they will have things to do as they enter the classroom. 740, the pre-K day, the official pre-K day begins, instructional day begins. Um, 740 with our opening activities. Um, during the opening activities, we have what's called morning meeting, um, where our students do calendar time, the weather, um, counting, on um, uh, things of that nature. We also have our first read aloud of the day um, and the children will engage in a story. Typically they'll do a picture walk um, and just learn about uh, what the story could be about for the first read aloud of the day. And then there's another read aloud at the end of the day. We have breakfast typically for about 30 minutes and that is still an instructional period for our pre-K students. Um, they're engaging in wonderful conversation, language building. They're also learning, uh, um, learning nutritional value, values, learning about uh, what they're eating and um, the nutritional value of, of what they could be, the foods that they are consuming. After breakfast, um, typically we will have um, our content time which could be a large or small group. Content time is um, basically everything except literacy. So it is math, science, social study, as well as our social emotional time. And that um, component of the day usually lasts about 20 minutes. We have approximately 60 minutes of gross motor time, outside time, or recess, recess, as some people call it, 60 minutes during the day for our uh, outside play or recess time. Every day we have a 10 minute period for phonological awareness, which is for our children, the manipulation of sound, um, whether it be sounds in the environment, which is how we start with phonological awareness, and, and then we move to alliteration, which is beginning sounds, and then to rhyming, which is ending sounds. So for 10 minutes a day, teachers are um, working with our children to manipulate sounds with the goal of then um, attaching those sounds to, letter, um, to letters of the alphabet. Daily, we have a a uh, 10 to 15 minute period where we totally focus on literacy in our large group. Um, that could be um, spaces between words, grammar being period and commas, um, reading left to right, those kinds of things. Those are the kinds of things that we address during literacy large group. Also part of the pre-K day is a critical component or hands-on exploratory learning, that component of, our, component of our day is called centers. That's a 60 minute block of time where the children work in centers in the classrooms. Uh, for an example, we have the house area, the block area, the reading area. For about 10 minutes, each child will be able to plan where they want to um, go to and work in the classroom. And they, um, the goal there is for them to make a choice as well as verbalize their choice in a complete sentence. So they do planning and then they have 60 minutes to uh, participate in any of the centers that they choose in the room. And then at the end, we have cleanup as well as a review period and um, the total time for centers is about 75 minutes when it's broken down into the components of plan, do, and review. We have lunch for about 30 minutes and 
just like breakfast, it is um, considered an instructional time in pre-K. Um, again, with us intentionally building language with conversations, as well as the discussions about nutritional concepts. Each pre-K class has a 60 minute period for rest time. Children are encouraged to take a nap, but they are not required, but they must rest their bodies and we encourage them to rest their bodies while they don't have to actually take a nap. And that's uh, 60 minutes during our day. Um, and we also have a 15 to 20 minute period for literacy small groups. And the same concepts will be addressed that have been addressed in the literacy large group. This is an extension of our literacy lessons for the day. The end of our day is with what we call our closing activities. That's about a 15 to 20 minute period where teachers strategic, strategically do a song or some kind of chat, chant to um, end our day and to review the pre-K day. And we also have our second read aloud during our closing activities. So just to give you an idea of what happens in the different components of the pre-K day, we look forward to seeing all of our four-year-old pre-K ELC Lions on Monday. Thank you, Mr. Hull. Ms. Fabergast will share with us some of the master schedule expectations for our Head Start threes, followed by our early Head Starts and our home-based. Thank you. Okay, so the Head Start program serves three and four-year-old children. The four-year-olds are served in our Head Start Pre-K classroom. So Head Start Pre-K, that would be Ms. Shatra's class or Ms. Elizabeth's class. They follow a schedule that looks very much like the, well, which is the Pre-K schedule that Greg just described. The Head Start three-year-old schedule looks very similar. Um, and this is an example of a three-year-old schedule. Um, the classroom schedules are flexible and are adjusted based on the needs of our children. The instruction is based on the Georgia Early Learning and Development Standards. So our lesson plans do also follow the five domains, physical development and motor skills, communication, language and literacy, cognition, social emotional development, and the social, de social emotional development is taught using our second step curriculum. And the fifth domain is approaches to play and learning. So those five domains and the Georgia Early Learning and Development Standards are taught throughout the day. And our day starts, children arrive at 7.20. And um, throughout the day, we embed all of the instruction, um, all of the um, domains and instructional practices that I mentioned. So our day looks very similar to the pre-K day. We have arrival, um, they have table toys, large group um, morning announcement time. Then they have breakfast, circle time. Um, and again, that's large group, small group instruction, center time is usually about an hour. And then of course there's there are transitions built in throughout, throughout the day. There's outside time and um, we provide water. There's like a little breaks, there are breaks throughout the day, bathroom breaks and breaks to have water. There's story time, which is also another large group activity. They have lunch time, rest time. And just as Greg mentioned, rest time is an opportunity for children to rest. They don't have to go to sleep. They're not required to, they're just provided the opportunity to. And then again, the day at, at closing, that's an opportunity for the children to um, talk about what they did for the day, summarize um, the wonderful things that happened at school and what they're going to do at school the following day. Um, and that's our Head Start day in a nutshell. Um, in early Head Start, very similar schedule, um, early Head Start serves children birth to age three. All classroom schedules, again, are flexible and adjusted based on the needs and interests of the children. In our infant room in particular, we have to be flexible because infants eat and sleep on demand. Teachers plan developmentally appropriate activities throughout the day. And that means that children, as you can see from the schedule, children are engaged in whole group lessons, story time, music and movement, small group instruction, um, individualization, the same one hour center time. But again, at center time, just like throughout the day, um, 
the, the structured activities like circle time and small group in, instruction, children are encouraged to participate, but are not required or forced to participate. We also have outdoor activities. We have our, the, the kids love the trike shed and the trikes are gonna be out there. Um, I know they're excited to see the slides and we've got opportunities for them to play with sidewalk chalk, all kinds of fun activities outside. And we've also embedded um, nutrition activities. And again, um, one thing I do want to stress is that all of our early, head, our early learning center classrooms are um, trauma sensitive classrooms. And that means the staff address the social emotional needs of children by building strong relationships with children. And that positive, strong relationship helps to promote secure attachment. And so your little ones will be learning how to make friends, how to express themselves, how to share with their friends. How they're going to learn regular classroom routines like putting their toys away um, and just learning the daily rituals and routines. Um, and in that, of course, health and safety. We can't forget health and safety practices. So they will, the teachers will be washing their hands throughout the day and sanitizing the classroom and the children will be learning to wash their hands and, and why we're washing our hands and why that's so important, okay? Um, we also have our home-based program. The home-based program serves pregnant women and children birth to age three. We have nine home educators. Um, some of our home educators are bilingual because some of our families are Spanish speaking. Um, so in the home-based program, we provide weekly personalized, currently virtual home visits. Um, but when, um, when they're not virtual, then the home educators will be um, in the homes. Families received um, devices and instructional supplies to assist with the weekly, weekly virtual instruction. So again, I wanna stress that. Um, so that's one-on-one, -on -one, the parent and the home educator having personalized instru um, instruction. So talking about the child's developmental needs and also talking about the, the um, setting goals for the family as well. Um, so those are 90 minutes, 90 minutes weekly. Um, it is individualized and again, just as we mentioned um, for center base, we address the Georgia Early Learning and Development Standards and the five domains. And um, that's the home-based program in a nutshell. Um, we are really right. excited to see you all and um, hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, Ms. Fabregas. I appreciate you explaining the Head Start and Early Head Start programs for our families. Um, Ms. Katie Salter is our preschool special education lead teacher and she's gonna talk us through the program schedule for a peace bed day. Hi everybody, I'm Katie. Uh, preschool special education is broken into three schedules. So we have our threes and fours preschool special education morning class, which meets from 7.30 to 10.30. Our preschool special education threes and fours afternoon class that meets from 11.30 to 2.30. And our preschool special education pre-K class, which mirrors general education pre-K and meets from 7.40 to 2.35. Um, the teachers for all three programs follow a set schedule that includes a meal, either breakfast or lunch or both for our pre-K students, opportunities for free play during centers and gross motor and free play during recess or outside time, um, as well as time for developing early academic skills such as letter and sound recognition, coloring for fine motor and early writing skills, um, counting, matching, sorting, and they do this during their large groups and their small groups throughout the day. Uh, teachers develop their lessons that they're going to meet and work on during those large groups and small groups based on individual IEP goals, as well as the observations that they're making for the students in their classes. Activities are geared towards each student's individual strengths and needs. And then we have therapists who come in and join our classes to lead small groups, work one-on-one -on -one with students and support the teacher in embedding IEP goals into lessons, play, and our daily routine. Thank you. If your child is remaining virtual, then the virtual learning plan that we developed at the beginning of the school will remain um, the guiding source for instruction. If your child is coming face-to-face -face for school, we will begin to work off of their IEP. The virtual learning plan will remain in place if there comes a time when your child transitions back to virtual. Child find is something that all schools in Clark County have. 
Um, at the Early Learning Center, we are charged with identifying children from ages two and a half to five who are not enrolled in another Clark County School District school who may need special education services. Identified children can be referred by anybody, their child care provider, their pediatrician, their parent, their early Head Start or Head Start teacher, um, anybody. Once the child has been referred, we will reach out to schedule them for one of our once a month child find screening days. Um, on our screening days, we have a team of educators and therapists, the nurse and audiologist, psychologist, who will meet with you and your child to screen their development as well as their vision and hearing and learn a little bit about their social and developmental history. After the screening, the team will meet and review the results and make a recommendation for the parent and child to either come back for a more comprehensive evaluation um, or we'll provide you with some activities to do to monitor your child's development as he grows. Um, so if you are interested in making a referral for Child Finds, you can either email me and my contact information will be at the end of the slideshow or you can call the front desk at the school. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Salter. We really appreciate you um, describing for us the preschool special education opportunities as well as our child find process. Um, as we go through with technology, a couple of questions have come um, up from several parents. And one of those is if, if my child's continuing virtually, yes, you will keep your iPad at home. They will continue to utilize that iPad. They'll continue to work with those platforms, Google Classroom, Zoom, or Class Dojo and the login to information that your teacher provided will continue to be um, what they launch from. If your child is coming, if you've chosen face-to-face -face and your child is coming face-to-face, -face, we ask that you maintain your iPad at home until after the Thanksgiving holidays. We know that the teachers are going to have some activities where they're bridging between school and home and they will continue to utilize those iPads for some of that in-home learning. So while those iPads will come back to school, we ask that you go ahead and plan to keep them home until after the Thanksgiving holidays because that will be the point in which um, they will ask for them to be returned to the classroom. Um, if you're having difficulty or if your device is in need of repair, we ask you to contact your teacher, complete the form, um, and we will happily get that um, either fixed or um, exchanged for you. Um, our tools for and supplies for distance learning will remain the same. They have the book bags with the consumable materials. Your teacher will reach out and let you know if there are supply pickup days that you need to trade out the books or the activities that you have within your book bag, um, and they'll continue to use the iPad. The supplies for face-to-face -face learning um, we ask that we make sure every child, if you'll send your child with a plastic bag with a complete change of clothes, um, accidents happen. And so we wanna make sure that your child has a complete change of clothes that currently fit and are in season. Um, if you'll label the bag with the child's name and the teacher's name, and then label the clothing with your child's name. As the temperature is beginning to drop and we're beginning to send coats, hats, and gloves, please make sure you label those with your children's name as well. Um, so we wanna make sure that everything that you send to school has your child's name on it so that we, we can make sure that if they get intermingled that they go back to the correct home and the correct child. Um, we will have our learning spaces set up here at school um, each child will have their own space and their own school supplies. We will also provide a nap blanket for children here at school, so you do not need to send a nap blanket back and forth. Um, and we will ask that we leave book bags at home um, unless there is a reason that we need to have a backpack for transporting particular materials, in which case communicate with your teacher. Um, Ms. Lakeisha McClendon is our social worker for the Early Learning Center. and She's going to talk through a little bit about our Second Step program. Hello. Um, we're going to talk about social emotional learning. So what is that? It is the process through which students and adults understand and manage emotions, set and achieve positive goals, 
feel and show empathy for others. So what does that mean? We are teaching our students the skills that they need to be successful inside and outside the classroom. So the second step is the social emotional curriculum that is used by our entire school district. It includes weekly lessons, as well as special units on bullying and child protection. These lessons help build a positive school climate, which has been proven to improve academics. In addition to the social emotional learning um, that we support for our students, we also provide some opportunities for parents. Ms. Daniels, would you like to talk through the Circle of Security parenting classes for us? Yes, ma'am, thank you. Uh, for our Early Head Start and Head Start staff and families, we also offer Circle of Security curriculum. And Circle of Security is a curriculum that is based on secure attachments and adult-child relationships. Um, our Early Head Start, Head Start staff receive the Circle of Security training. And also we open up the opportunity for Early Head Start and Head Start parents to attend uh, and we also, you know, we have a lot of uh, group options, you know, an English option, a Spanish option. Um, sometimes we're able to offer um, a, a, a male session, a father, you know, father, father figure sessions also. And um, Dr. Tracy Topple is our mental health consultant that helps with our circle of security. And she has prepared a video with the help of a parent to, to give you a short introduction. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us for this virtual open house. Today, I wanted to tell you about an exciting opportunity that we have for uh, all parents out there of the Early Learning Center. It's a parenting session class that we will run weekly starting on September 16th from two to four in the afternoon. So it'll be every Wednesday that'll start in September and run through Thanksgiving. Um, and today joining us, I have Selena Johnson with you, and she is not only a parent, but she's also a paraprofessional. And we're going to talk to you a little bit about circle security parenting and how we do this in this virtual environment. So thank you for joining me, Selena. How are you? Yes. I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. Thank yes. you for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know you have a little one and you're also a paraprofessional. Um, yes. For you, what, what does, uh, in your own words, what is circle security parenting? Yes, um, circle of security, when I think of circle of security, I think of, you know, um, very interesting, um, knowing that you're good enough, and very informative. So you participated in the parenting program, and then what are some of the big things that you've learned out of circle security parenting? I'm, what I have learned is to, you know, be more patient um, with my with my kids and to know that, you know, um, that when it is certain things that they have going on when they're trying to, you know, go in and coming out of, you know, just having that sense of knowing that the parent is there that and when the parent is gone, it gives the kids, uh, you know, it just lets them know that, you know, um, that sense of security and I've, I've learned to understand that more with the hands circle or with the hands uh you know in the circle of security that's right because yeah. we are we it, our children's behavior is hard to understand sometimes right especially yes. who's at home with their kids right now all the time we have lots yeah. of opportunities <laughs> right lots of opportunities yes. to practice parenting and so this program that we're offering um is a, for you all to connect once a week with other parents. And we talk about the good, the bad, um, everything in between. And we have a good time doing yes. it. So it's a, a place where you can share, get support, and most importantly, learn about your ch child's development, learn about their behavior. And as Selena was talking about, thinking about how that behavior um, is communicating something really, really important about how important you are in the relationship with them. Right. We're gonna work on uh, building up strong relationships, yeah. especially now.
And so, okay. All right. And um, if you're interested in this circle of security, just, um, you know, in an early Head Start or Head Start, let your child's teacher know or the fills or home educator. All right. So we're going to move on to the ELC pledge. Um, every morning at the ELC, we get our instructional day started by saying our ELC pledge. And so, you know, I know this is a lot to, you know, to go through and read, but our kids are so resilient. Um, they memorize this and they have a lot of fun saying it every morning. And so here's our pledge. Today, I pledge to do my best by being ready to learn, responsible for myself, respectful to others. I am an ELC lion. Hear me roar. And they love that part. <laughs> and then um, the second part I want to talk to you about is um, what we call PBIS or PBIS. It stands for Positive Behavioral Interventions and Supports. It's pretty much just, you know, bringing attention to the positive behaviors that we want to see um, and, and reinforcing those behaviors and just really children that are showing, um, you know, those, those positive behaviors that we're wanting to see. It also, you know, helps to shape a, a positive behavior culture at the school as well. Okay, some important things about us staying connected is learning um, from our school, or if we're learning from home, we are still a team working together. Um, you can look on the district website for families. There are several parent resources. There is also now um, an opportunity um, to see our reopening guidebook, which is posted and will um, talks about what the district is doing to create that um, safe and healthy schools and the district facilities for both our students and our employees to help and what processes that um, as a district we will be going through to ensure that we are keeping children safe um, throughout the day and the cleaning protocols that our custodians will be using to ensure that we've cleaned all our frequently touched surfaces. Um, you can also visit the ELC website. This town hall will be posted later on in the day, um, as well as our distance learning pages, which have a number of opportunities um, for additional resources. With your classrooms, you're connecting with the teacher. Continue, you'll continue to connect through Class Dojo, through teacher office hours, um, through those conversations that you can have um, via Zoom with the teacher. Um, and then we'll continue to have drop-in with the director. During virtual learning, we've had those on Thursday mornings at 7.30. Um, once we return on November 9th to face-to-face, -to -face, um, those timeframes will be changed. Ms. McClendon? Hello, we want to help you stay connected and we are here to help your child be successful academically. As needs and challenges arise throughout the school year, I know that I am here to help support our families. Together, we can figure out what you need, find resources in the community that may be helpful and assist with application and referrals. So please feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is at the bottom of the screen. Um. Our nurse, Nurse Meredith, is on our campus each and every day, and she'll share with us a little bit of what's expected. Hi, um, I'm the school nurse, Meredith Dykes. I'm looking forward to meeting all of you. What we need um, for you to bring in, if you haven't already, before school starts on the 9th, is updated immunization um, records. If you don't already have those turned in, we also need you to have a vision, um, hearing, dental, and BMI screening form, which is a 3300 form. We need those completed as well. Um, prior to um, school starting, you can get those done at the health department, at your pediatrician's office, even at the Hillsman Health Center here on campus on the east side of town. Um, we also, um, if your child has any health issues, um, we need individual student health care forms, such as for asthma, um, seizures, um, 
allergies, any kind of health um, issues your child has, we need to make sure that we have current forms signed and completed by you as well as by their physician so that we can provide the health care that they need here at school. We also have um, COVID-19 recommendations and precautions. We are um, requiring or um, in highly encouraging all students and staff to wear masks um, while they're in the building. Um, there will be some designated uh, mask-free zones um, for the children um, throughout the day. And then also precautions will include um, washing hands frequently um, and being six feet apart, um, social distancing as much as we can um, for um, early learners. We also have early um, uh, um, COVID-19 resources um, that you can um, look at these websites here um, for where to get testing and questions and those types of things. We will also be doing contact tracing so if your child is exposed by another classmate, you will be getting a call from me or one of our um, COVID team uh, task force members um, to let you know um, what precautions you need to do for you and your child and your home and, um, and what the next steps would be if your child is exposed. Um, and if you have any other questions, feel free to give me a call or you can email me. Thank you. Thank you. And Nurse Meredith, if I'm correct, those are the three W's, right? Wear your mask, wash your hands, and watch your distance. Correct. The three W's. Um, student meal services for our face-to-face -face learners um, will serve breakfast and lunch in the classrooms. Um, we've also provided a link to the menus, which you can access um, from the school nutrition website. Um, and Eating in the classroom is what we've done for years, so that's not a change for us, but it is a way for us to reduce um, exposure. Virtual learners will continue to be able to pick up school lunches um, from their home school um, or the school that is closest to their home. Those will be Monday through Friday between an 11 to 12, but you do need to go in and register those. So if you are a virtual learner, and would like to pick up lunches, you need to make sure you go to the website and that you register for your lunch. Um, attendance for virtual learners will continue to be um, the requirement that you participate actively in all synchronous learning sessions. Face-to-face um, -face learning will require on-time arrival and departure. Um, and as a reminder, if you're arriving late or picking up early, you just need to bring with you your doctor's dentist note or your appointment card. We will note that um, all of our outside, do do outside doors will be locked, but we did put a doorbell in at the front so that you can ring the door and let the office know that you have arrived. Um, our progress will continue to be recorded. If you're virtual, we ask that you continue to send in and share photos and video clips of your student engaging in the learning. Um, and all students, virtual or face-to-face, -face, will continue to receive progress reports at conferences. Um, as a reminder, you know, we've just had conferences for our preschools um, and Head Start families. Pre-K will have their next set of conferences in December um, and again in May. And then our Head Start and Preschool Special Education will have theirs again at the end of the quarter. Um, here are our contact information for each of our programs. Um, we will share this slideshow as well as the video clip so that you will know who you can reach out and contact. If you're interested in registering for preschool or pre-K, um, you can access that registration information on the website or you can reach out to Mr. Nobles. If you are interested in registering for Head Start or Early Head Start, we ask that you reach out to Ms. Marsha Hawkins, um, our coordinator in Head Start um, and Early Head Start is Ms. Angie Moon. Our assistant coordinator is Ms. Fabregas. The pre-K coordinator who introduced himself is Mr. Hull. Our team lead for Ms. Salter. Um, our school nurse, Nurse Meredith. Um, our social worker, Ms. Lakeisha McClendon, or myself. Um, you are very welcome 
to reach out to any one of us if you have a question or you can phone our Early Learning Center um, at the number. We just ask that you remember if you need to reach out to a classroom teacher during the school day, they may not be able to answer the phone immediately because they're working with and responding to student needs. So they may have to call you back at the end of a day. If you are going to have a change in transportation, so normally your child is a car rider, today you want them on the bus, or normally they're a bus rider and today that you want to have them in the car, we ask that you get that information to your classroom teacher before one o'clock, if you will text, write, or get them that information so that we can ensure that our children go home safely. We now invite you to join us at your Zoom link that you received through Class Dojo for your open house.